let me ask you this in, in relation to, to the government and accurate statistics. And you know one of the reasons why I started this show was to try to do the best I could to seek the truth so that individual investors could, could hear what they needed to hear. We heard a comment out of the, the Congressional Budget Office, and, and we have heard for quite some time that President Obama planned to uh, utilize the infrastructure spending as a part of his stimulus. Right. Then all of a sudden, yesterday or day before, I can't remember which, we hear a report from the CBO that basically says, well, this won't be effective because the, the spending won't actually take place until late '09 and then into '10. Could that be an admission on the government's part that they've done too much? Is that a way to save face and pare back this stimulus package? No, I, I in fact, um, they've actually done very little. Um, and and they they face an extreme an extreme crisis. I don't know quite what what they're going to do here. The next couple of weeks will will, will tend to resolve that. But uh, uh, we are clearly seeing signs of what I would call a depression. Um, you'll find there's no definition of depression out there. The way most people think of it today, they think of a depression as a really bad recession. Uh, Back before World War II, economic downturns were all, all called depressions. And if, and if you just plotted uh, the level of business activity on a graph, you'd, you'd find that it would dip during a depression and then head higher again. And that dip was the depression. But they had a name for the downside of, the, of that dip, which was called recession, and the upside was, was recovery. And after World War II, they didn't want to call... Uh, downturns, depressions, because of the memories it evoked of the Great Depression. So they just started calling the, the downturns recessions. But most people think of depression as a an unusually bad recession. Uh, some years back, I, ta- I talked with uh, members of the uh, Bureau of Economic Analysis who published the GDP and some people at the National Bureau of Economic Research who determine whether or not the economy is in, in a recession. Uh, about what might constitute uh, a depression in the terms of something just generally worse than the commonly viewed recession. And the consensus I came up with, although this is not a formal definition, it is for me, but <clears throat> it's never been accepted formally, is that uh, where a recession would be two consecutive quarters of uh, contracting activity and in inflation-adjusted gross domestic product, uh, a depression uh, would reflect a, a recession where the peak to trough contraction in activity was greater than 10 percent, and, and a Great Depression would be something where the peak to trough contraction was in excess of 25 percent. The Great Depression of the 30s, the economy contracted by a full third. Uh, before World War II, most depressions were in that 10 percent plus range. We haven't had a 10% plus contraction since World War II. But if you look at the numbers we're seeing now, just in the last week or two, uh, if you take uh, inflation-adjusted retail sales as measured on a quarter-to-quarter basis annualized, that's the way they report the GDP growth. Uh, it's down in the fourth quarter at an annualized rate of 17%. Industrial production was down at an annualized rate of uh, 11%. Uh, the house, <coughs> housing start numbers were down at an annualized rate of about 69%. Now, those eventually, I mean, if you keep seeing declines like that, and we're not seeing any signs of an economic upturn, that eventually will become your annual pace of decline and would certainly qualify as a, as a depression. Um, and uh, we, we look at a variety of leading indicators. Nothing is, is, is uh, signaling an upturn here. This is, we're, we're still in a period of, of, of collapse. If, uh, and that's why Obama, Mr. Obama, has got to get in a uh, stimulus package of some form. Stimulus packages normally take six to nine months if they're going to do any good. Uh, doing things that will create jobs is a lot better than just sending people uh, checks in the mail that, uh, that don't have much impact. But again, the government doesn't have the ability to fund it. 
So there, that's a very serious uh, problem going forward. So they're faced with, with what you would consider to be worst-case scenario whereby it's quite possible that they are going to have to monetize that debt during this next round of stimulus. I, I think that's. I think it's going to start there. If they don't, it will happen at some point in time because the government otherwise is bankrupt. If you look at the most recent uh, financial statements published on the government using uh, generally accepted accounting principles, uh, you'll see that the deficit in uh, uh, 2008, which was otherwise reported at uh, 454 billion. That's basically on a, a cash outlay basis. It doesn't include uh, uh, all the war and uh, uh, count social security payments as, as an offsetting surplus. Um, it, it, if you put in uh, accounting for social security and Medicare in terms of the changes and the unfunded liabilities, that present value of same deficit was $5.1 trillion for the most recent year. Uh, that that's beyond control, beyond containment. And you couldn't tax that, tax that much out of the American people if you wanted to. And the uh, with total uh, uh, government obligations now, including the, the net present value of those unfunded liabilities at sixty five trillion dollars, that's four times the level of GDP. There's no way the government's ever going to be able to to pay that. And the effect at some point is either a federal government bankruptcy, which is uh, rarely seen, or a circumstance where they increasingly meet the obligations with monetized debt and uh, debase the currency by rubbing up the printing presses, just paying off in cheap dollars, and you see a, you see a hyperinflation that results from that. That's, eventually, you're going to have a hyperinflation, whether it starts this year or it's five years down the road. So, so basically, you would contend that we're past the point of no return. We have two choices, default or inflate our way out of it. Um, th those are the practical choices. Now, if the government wants to step in and slash Social, social Security and Medicare, they could do that, but I, I just don't see that happening from a political standpoint. So it may always be a happy surprise there. You can never tell. Uh, Richard Nixon was able to... Uh, Open China because he was uh, noted as an anti-communist. If Hubert Humphrey had tried that, he would have been referred to as a communist. It would have been a disaster for him politically. The new president is one who's uh, noted as uh, favoring uh, large government. Um, he probably could get away with uh, uh, cutting uh, Social Security and Medicare a lot more easily than would a, a conservative Republican. But... Um, I, I, I don't expect that. I, I don't see that happening practically because no one in Washington has political will to see it through. Yeah, that is definitely that is definitely going to impact some elections if that does happen. Um, let me ask you this, John. I've heard you use the term hyperinflationary depression uh, on, on several occasions, and I've actually had people come to my blog and say that by definition is impossible to because if you have the growth you won't have the depression. Can you elaborate just a little bit on how those two factors can coexist together? Well, mo most hyperinflations are, by their nature, uh, depressions. Economic activity is, uh, slows down, actually grinds to a halt. And in fact, what makes it a great depression is a collapse of normal commerce. Most recessions we've had of the last uh, uh, 20 30 years have been inflationary recessions. This is just a, uh, uh, you know, an, an exacerbation of that. Uh, often the inflation has been triggered by oil, but here we have a system where the uh, government has to monetize the debt, increase the money supply, and it'll actually be fueling inflation as the, as the economy uh, collapses. For the rest of this great interview, visit our website, www.stockshots.tv. That's www.stockshots.tv. Thank you for listening.